I want to go back to that block of time between 2005 and 2008, because I know you went through, um, you know, some diff- a difficult stretch there, uh, particularly yeah. in 2006, where you found yourself on the balcony of a hotel in Canada. Yeah. Uh, what happened that day? And, you know, how has it, I guess, forever changed you? Forever changed me. That was that was actually uh, 2005, and that was uh, okay. I was shooting uh, Like Mike too, uh, you know, uh, and I was shooting that movie out there. And remember, I said in 1997 through 2005, I was going through you know some really dark <laughs> areas in my life, and so at that point, I wanted to hit it off button. I really wanted to hit at 2005. I felt like I don't want to live here <laughs> anymore. And I wanted to commit suicide. So I was at the top of that, you know, balcony at the Sutton Hotel. And what it was, was that I had uh, compart- um, took frustration of life and all these things that were going on and not expressing it to anybody. You know what I mean? Because I was this entertainer, I was this teenager, and then I was being, uh, you know, misled by people, hurt by people, mistakes I made, all these different things. And I just was like, yo, this would be the best, you know, thing to do at this point. But when I was up there, um, I at that time, I was saying, you know, something spoke to me and, you know, I didn't jump. And I locked myself in the bathroom. But what it really was, it was the Lord speaking to my spirit at that moment. And I locked myself in that bathroom. And I said, Kel, you need to, you need some things you need to look at in your life, habits you need to look at in your life, people that needs to, you know, go in your life, all these different things. And that's when I made the choice to start a change. It didn't start, uh, you know, perfect at that point. That's when I tell people that's the faith adventure. You know what I mean? This is an adventure that <laughs> this is this is an adventure that we're on, and it's going to take faith. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take you seeking His face, uh, you becoming a mirror of God's reflection, and that takes time because you know it takes a lot of time to be groomed to be able to do that. And uh, that was the start of that. You look now um, with me being able to speak to my fellow actors and people that are in the entertainment business that wanted that are contemplating suicide or, you know, contemplating that because I see it all the time. And the thing about it is to be able to speak to them now in such a uh, real way and say that I've been there and I know what you're going through and you can get through this process uh, because it's hard when you can't trust others um, when you, they only see the, you, this on television and they don't really understand what you're really going through. Um, it's a lot. And then whatever you might be dealing with just, you know, on the surface, whatever it may be. Um, so for me, um, I, I'm at a point in my life now where it's all about God and me reaching others. And I would be doing a disservice if I didn't tell them, um, about the love of God and giving them that, him giving them that grace where I don't care anymore. Cause people are kind of like, man, you, you be on set and you be talking about Jesus and you be on these podcasts, <laughs> you be on these shows, you be there's hallways. And a lot of people feel like, Oh, I'm going to lose my job. If I talk about Jesus, I'm going to lose this. I'm going to do at the end of the day, man, I, it, he was there for me when other people weren't, when these jobs weren't, when these things weren't, he was there. So uh, I am all a part of God and I'm never letting go of that. You know, I don't want to slip back into that darkness. I found light. That's where I'm staying, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, it, it yeah. Um, I, I know that, especially because of the, the type of actor that you were, you know, for a lot of people's childhood, you know, always happy, always funny, you know, always making people laugh. And you've heard comedians talk about like there's a there's more darkness behind that than people really know and expect. So for yeah. you, how how what was it like for you trying to navigate between this character that people saw and the real you? Like, did you when you were in social settings or you know in your private time, did you always feel the need to be, you know, Kale from all that or Kale mm-hmm. from Good Burger? Yeah, it's it's a thing because you know, people uh, assume that that's what you are. You know what I mean? Immediately, because they they feel like they know you because, you know, they've grown up with you. They're watching you on TV and they feel like that's who you are. And back then, you know, you really didn't have social media. So when you meet somebody in person, it's only based off what you saw 
on on TV. And then if they, you know, approach you in a different way, it's like, whoa, hey, that person is not, is not what I thought. Um, for me, of course, it was a thing of, yeah, I got to be on. I, I got to be on. I got to be this character. But then I got to a point as I was adulting, you know, through uh, life in the public eye, where it was a thing of the things that I was dealing with, it was hard to juggle both. You know what I mean? And it was literally like, I'm just going to be myself within this. I'm glad that you've been just so open and honest and candid about your faith walk. But another thing that you talk a lot about is also therapy. Be, you know, I know there are some people, uh, especially in, in, in church circles, who feel like, if you have Jesus, you don't need therapy, but you you talk about both. Why was it important for you to also be open about sort of the therapy component? Here's the thing. Um, my mom uh, is a retired teacher. My dad is a, a retired uh, psychologist. And so uh, for me, you know, being around therapists and psychologists and things of that nature, uh, it's very important to uh, speak your mind, um, and for me, all of them, you know, all of them that I saw were believers. And so, uh, God can use, uh, a doctor. He can use a therapist. It's just important for you to have a conversation with your therapist first to see, you know, what they believe in. Uh, and I think it's very important. Uh, I was speaking to my therapist yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, uh, I'm all about, uh, Jesus in therapy. You know what I mean? And she's, I mean, it was beautiful. It was like, uh, she got off the phone yesterday because we were talking about some, some deep stuff. And, uh, she was like, and I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm always praying for you. I just want you to know that, Kale. So that's, that's beautiful. Like she's giving me, um, you know, skills and things that I can do, you know, as far as habits that I can do, but also along with my habits, of my faith and my righteousness as well. And then also still praying with me too. So uh, that's so important. Uh, you have so many, uh, you know, leaders that are believers that are juggling a lot. You know what I mean? They're juggling a lot. And, you know, cause I, I tell people all the time, even with me preaching, um, I'm, I'm not out here promoting like, oh, this is easy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, to, to to have a sermon every Sunday, to also be on sets all week, to also be a, a father and a loving husband and all these different things all juggled up at once in writing and producing all this together. Um, you need to uh, be in the right mindset. You need to be able to let go of certain certain things. You need to be able to uh, wake up with every day, preparing for your day. Uh, and that's the reason why I did um, the book Bless Mode as well, because I wanted to show people how to prepare for your day uh, with the Lord and with the right mindfulness as well. 